Hi folks, welcome back to church tonight. Again, as we approach this Sunday evening at around the 6.30, I'm looking at the clock over there, to make sure that I'm keeping the times right. Yep, it's 6.30, it's time to your, for your favorite channel, your favorite show, and um, I hope that you will be blessed and enjoy tonight's sermon, and um, I, I just trust it will be good for you tonight. We've had a, a, a very, a busy weekend and and today I've just been really relaxing which is good because I've been working pretty hard at work as well doing extra time over time and so it's been nice just to veg out I've been vegging out all day I listened to a little bit of Christian music and I slept on the lounge in the air conditioning so life is good but you know one thing that's uh, been impressed on my mind more and more over these difficult uh, days with COVID is the importance of um, family family connections, people connections. And I mean, in Australia, we are really not hard done by it all. We have so much freedom, but you know, in some places they are totally shut down, locked out and isolated. And, and even, uh, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they get along with life and how they're uh, continuing to be, you know, motivated and happy and all those things. And perhaps some of them aren't and, and struggling, but nevertheless, it's been a lesson for me. And I've been learning uh, the importance of family, the importance of relationship, the importance of connection because really for me um, I grew up at like as a young teenager uh, making my own life I didn't have a large connection of uh, support groups or family and I had to make my own life and it says no man is an island but sometimes when you have to survive you have to come a bit of an island so I guess you know there's a bias towards me that I become a bit of an island and and don't communicate and don't share and don't engage with people as much as I should and because you're seeing me on the on the computer and I'm, I'm preaching I'm engaging but you know um, just for other things sometimes I'm a bit more you know reclusive and busy with my own stuff and so I've just been reminded you know so much of it with this COVID how important it is and um, I'm seeing some beautiful relationships uh, just uh, growing deeper and deeper during these times of difficulties and I guess Yesterday was a particularly important day for, for the family, for the, for the Woodhouse family in, in Australia because my brother passed away in England and um, yesterday we had a memorial service in my house. It was, um, it was a time of fellowship and food and a little bit of remembrance and photographs and remembering all the good things. So we, we celebrated his life. We, we, we talked a little about his death and, and the, 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 uh, the beautiful promise of Christians of the resurrection to life you know which is so important but we, we didn't sort of you know get all gloomy and downcast we, we focused on the the beauty of life and we had lovely photographs over many many years which we all shared so my whole lounge room was crowded out with people family and we had such a wonderful day and again it kept it's been reinforcing into my mind you need to have more family time you, you know family is important we need to spend time with family you know um, if even sometimes we take it for granted sometimes we get too busy sometimes we're just not geared that way and sometimes I'm not so much geared to just to have family I have small social groups but I've not engaged in like having the whole family and grabbing the whole family or going to a big family thing I tend to shy away from some of those big gatherings but um, I'm, you know I'm learning that we need these things are a valuable thing. Anyway, just a rambling tip, but um, I hope that during your times with COVID, no matter what country you live in and what situations you're going through, that you learn positive things and good things out of this uh, situations that we face, because even in difficult times, God can speak to us and God can change us and God can develop different attitudes in our hearts, work on our character, and, and we become a better person for it. So. You know, I'm an old dog, but you can still teach an old dog new tricks. And so I, this year I purpose to, to engage a little bit more than I have done. And, and I think that's so valuable. Family is so important. I, I appreciate it. I love my family. I love my extended family. I love my adopted uh, sons and daughters overseas. I, I, I embrace all of the church people that I know and the churches that I know. They are my family. I've got a, a huge, incredible family. And and truly I, I embrace those people, but I want to be certainly more reactive this year, or active this year in, in increasing that time. So 
There's a little thing that I've been going through. I hope you're learning something through COVID. Kerry's sneezing in the background, but she doesn't have COVID. So don't be alarmed, don't worry. You don't have to wear a mask. It's all quite safe. Um, don't mind. Anyway, tonight uh, I'm going to talk about uh, three little secrets from the book of Proverbs. Last week I was talking about the meaning of life and I talked about lamentations. Lamentations. I always think I'm saying that wrong. It sounds like... I'm thinking, I'm thinking of lamentations, yes, when I say lamentations. I'm thinking of lamentations. I've got food on my mind. I'm on a diet at the moment, the man diet. I haven't changed into a man yet. I'm still a boy. But I am losing a little bit of weight. But, yeah, my mind goes back to food a lot. So, yes, not, not, not lamentations, but lament, <laughs> lamentations. lamentations. And we talked about uh, Solomon, the, the wise king. And so, bouncing off that a little bit tonight... I want to go to the book of Proverbs um, and, and we're going to look at some things from the book of Proverbs, which I think is quite good, it's meaningful, it, it can be helpful to us. And the Word of God, here it is here, the Word of God, uh, it's so important for us to put into our hearts and we need to capture these words and write them on our hearts. So let me read from Proverbs chapter 3, I'm going to read from verse 5 to verse 10. Then we will start breaking it down and looking at some of the points that I want to make tonight. So here we go. Proverbs 3, chapter 5. Chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes, Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will bring over, bring over with new wine. What a, what, a, what a wonderful promises we have in the word of God from the, the book of Proverbs written by the wisest man in the world. And we can engage in these things and take these principles and build them into our lives. And, and, and it, 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 you are establishing God's principles, the Word of God, when you put into practice the Word of God. And the Bible tells us not to be simply hearers of the Word, but to be doers of the Word. And so it's so important for us that we are, so, we are doers and not just hearers. So this is a good opportunity for us to start to hear the Word of God tonight and then start to apply the the living reality and practical aspects of this word into our lives and how do we move forward with that. All right, let me get my notes. Boom, back again. Here's my notes. Okay, so tonight we're going to look at uh, abundant Christian living. That's really the theme, abundant Christian living. And I've titled this Three Secrets from the Book of Proverbs. Actually, I've got four secrets. Uh, and we might get to secret four. I hope we do because I, I always run out of time, but I hope we can get to secret secret four but if not we're going to have three secrets and you'll be left guessing wondering okay in the old testament none were wiser than solomon his desire for a discerning heart to govern the people and the ability to dist distinguish between right and wrong brought not only the requested wisdom but an equal riches and honor and we read about that in, in kings uh, about his life and how, how he was received by the people and how uh, deer, deities, I don't know if it's deities, what's the name, deities? Is that, is that like kings and queens? Yeah, okay, deities of other countries would come to the King Solomon for wisdom and for understanding. His proverbs are more than words of wisdom though because they're not, it's not just a book of wisdom, it's not just a, a, a written book on the library shelf you you don't just walk into um, your store or get on Amazon and you buy the book of wisdom this was included in the Holy Scriptures so this was inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written and to be added to the to the canon of the Word of God and the scriptures and so it's not just human wisdom there is there is godly inspired Holy Spirit inspired wisdom written into the, the passages of Proverbs and we, we can get a lot of understanding and a lot of wisdom out of it if only we would choose to be wise and sometimes we, we don't make that choice so well in life we don't choose uh, wisdom when it's available especially when we're young but it's important that, that we make wisdom a thing that we look to, to gain uh, you know as, as well as common sense is another thing and common sense isn't common anymore 
And when you're in the workplace, it drives you crazy. But that's another story. Anyway, tonight, uh, first point. Success is the result of right choices. Success is the result of right choices. I want to read the, the verses applicable to this again. Success is the what? Result. Success is the result of right choices. And we're going to read these scriptures here in verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not, under, not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Now that's really clear, isn't it? I mean, just reading that alone is, is very clear that we're to trust, trust with all of our hearts, acknowledge him, acknowledge God in our lives and, and through his deeds in our lives and he will make our path straight, which means, you know, he's going to give us success. I believe that means success in what we do. So the success is the result of having the right choice. God wants you to succeed. In everything you do, he wants you to be more than a con conqueror. You know, right through the, the Bible is the teachings of us being living in victory and how to live in victory. And in Romans, uh, it, it talks about us being more than conquerors, that we should know the victory in every battle. You know, uh, that's, what, that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be overcomers. In Corinthians, it talks about standing against every onslaught. You know, how, we, how do we stand against the you know, attacks and how do we become strong? And, and so there's this teaching on how we, we stand against the attacks so that we can conquer, so we can be victorious in our lives and in our Christian lives. In Ephesians, it talks about knowing that the greater is the one within you. It talks about knowing who God is and that God dwells within you. And if you know your God, then you can be greater and you can have victory and you can have strength when you know who is in you. you. You carry the very presence of God and that will give you the strength to overcome all obstacles and to fight every battle and, and, it, and it nearly it sort of guarantees vic, uh, victory, it guarantees success. But I want to tell you, success comes in, uh, in many different ways and different kinds of thinking and success is not always how we see success. success it's God's success. Sometimes God's success looks a bit different to our success. We just think success is, you know, getting things right all the time, being the best of everything, being on top, being having achievements, being, you know, winning gold medals and having trophies and, 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 and things like that. And, and then we can start to look at, um, you know, worldly, uh, worldly possessions and jobs and careers and, and start to think of success in that way. But, you know, really, God's success is a little different to our thinking and understanding and so sometimes when we might feel we're unsuccessful, God is actually saying, you are very successful. You are doing, you know, the right thing. I think of this story where there's some missionaries who went to um, Japan, I think it was, and they served in that country for uh, years and years and years and years and years without seeing a single convert, without one person becoming a Christian. They served faithfully to God in, in that place without seeing a convert. Uh, and many, many years passed. They might have thought they were totally unsuccessful in their missions. Maybe they were downcast and discouraged. I don't know because I, I haven't read the full story. But they could have thought this way. But, you know, God didn't see them as unsuccessful. Because on that work that the missionaries laid for those many years, out of that came a great harvest of Christians in that nation. And so let's not get confused about what success looks like. It really doesn't look like we think it will look. And oftentimes it's opposite to what we imagine but God has a different view of success and we need to sort of keep on terms with God keeping God's direction so we can understand how he sees success and um, so we realize that we are successful but the level of success depends upon the choices that we make so success is by your choice your choice so many people blame everything from their environment to their upbringing to their you know their parents to their whatever country they live in you know whatever their color of skin uh, you know whatever but really success in life depends on you and you making the right kinds of decisions and here tonight we read this about trusting in God trusting in God the primary choice is to place our total trust in God total trust in God 
Lean not on to your own understanding, you know, trusting God. We, may, we need to resist the temptation to trust human logic and natural reasoning. And that's a scary thing for us as, as uh, Westerners, as modern people, because we, we like to trust in logic. I know men like to be very logical in their approach to life, and you know, they like to solve things and, and work things out in a logical manner, in a, in a natural manner, you know. Uh, sometimes very unemotionally or sometimes seemingly detached from the situation. Nevertheless, there's a sense that, you know, we, as men, we want to do, do this stuff in our human understanding, our human ways and our human logic. And yet, uh, if we're going to be successful in life, God's kind of success in life, it means that we, we have to resist the temptation of just trusting our own judgments and the way we do things and indeed logic. Because sometimes God asks us to do things that are not logical. And um, if we only have logic as our guide, then if God wants us to do something that seems out of the question, we are going to say, that's not logical, God. Why are you asking me to do that? That makes no sense. How, how, why should I do that? That's ridiculous. You know, it makes no sense at all. It's not logical. And yet God doesn't want us to be logical sometimes. God wants us to step out of the natural, out of the human thinking, and he wants to go beyond. He wants us to go beyond that. He wants us to step into faith, uh, tr having trust in God. And the, the, the scripture just said that, um, let me read it again, I think because it's important. Let me find it. Wait, here it is. It says here, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Absolute trust, complete trust, all of your conviction, all of your heart, all of your will, you need to trust in God and, 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 and stand up for God and step out for God. And in that, you will find success. So it, is, it will be against logic and human understanding at times. I remember many years ago, uh, we, needed to, we, were needed, we, were, we were feeling called cool to go overseas on one of our missions trips, uh, feeling it was the right time and we needed to go and God was sort of, uh, you know, giving us the nudge and opening up the, the ways again for us to travel overseas. Uh, but I didn't have enough money and I only had enough money for one ticket uh, and which I paid for the, let's say I paid for that one ticket, I had one ticket and I was talking to my pastor about it and saying, look, you know, God's called me to, as, to missions to go back again overseas and we're going to do this trip and, um, you know, I'm going, you know, it's happening and we, we're really excited about it and, uh, but I've only got enough money for one ticket and um, he nearly fell off the chair backwards. I mean, I wasn't talking to him to say, oh, can you give me some money, Pastor? You know, can you help me out? I'm broke. You know, I want to do God's will, but I've got no money. You know, I didn't do, you know, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't going in talking to him to try and coax some money out of him. I was just telling him that we're going on this missions trip, you know, it'll be coming up soon and we'll be away for what, six or seven weeks or whatever the time will be. And, and we know God's seen in and God's calling us, but I've only got enough money for one ticket, so I've just done it anyway. In faith, in faith, because I had to not look at logic. I had to throw logic out the window. You know, logic doesn't tell you to buy one ticket. What, was I just going to abandon my wife and leave her home in Australia? No, I was taking her with me. She was part of the, the missions. We are together missionaries, you know. Uh, it wasn't logical for me to buy one ticket, not knowing about money. You know, I had no more money to pay for another ticket. It wasn't logical to, to even buy one ticket to start with. And yet, you know, I was trusting the Lord with all of my heart. And it's a long story, and I won't go into it tonight, tonight now, but I want to tell you, uh, the money was provided for that second ticket. I hadn't got the money, but it was provided. I did not beg for it. So I'm not begging, or, uh, and I hate people that beg for money. You know, if you live by faith, you live by faith. If you step out in faith, you step out in faith. You don't say, well, well, children or people or everybody who can listen, I'm stepping out in faith and I'm doing this. I've only got this, but if you want to help me, then, you know, feel free to give me lots of money. That, that's not really faith, you know. That's just trying to get money off people, and I hate that. Anyway, don't be upset if you've done it. Don't be upset, don't be upset if you do do it. I don't. I don't. I just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It goes against logic. It goes against normal thinking, but it gives us success in life. Okay. And an equal important choice is to acknowledge God in everything, in all our ways. The Bible says, acknowledge God in all our ways. What does that mean? What does it mean to acknowledge God in all of our ways? It means to put God first in our hearts. Put him in our heart. He's 
first in our hearts. He's first in our home. He's first in our ministries. Some people's ministries become, you know, greater than God. <laughs> but we have to put him first. In our business, God is first. Everything in our life, we make God first. And we acknowledge him first. Like, I, I've got so many testimonies of the goodness of God. And I, I acknowledge freely that God is so good and gracious and, and has blessed me and blessed Kerry and blessed our lives so much and that we walk in a great abundance of life. And I'm not just talking about money and finances and material things. I'm, I'm talking about an abundant life that God has given us as we have stepped faithfully out, trusting in him with all of our hearts. God has placed riches beyond measure into our lives. And we are blessed and, and people. I sometimes sit in my chair and I just imagine that and think about the blessings of God. True success is walking on God's road. It's God's road. It doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't include all human logic, and sometimes it goes fights against human logic. But it's a choice that we need to make. We need to choose in ourselves that we're going to take this way of trusting in God and take this way of walking a life of faith in God, with God, and making Him our priority in life. And it's just so important. So it's your choice if you want to. Success. If you want God's kind of success, which is I'm talking about tonight, you need to trust in God with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Trust him and have faith. Believe him and obey him. Put him first in your life and acknowledge him. Praise him. Testify about his goodness. And you're going to be on the road to success. I guarantee it. it, it it's the, part of the path that you will be on. Okay, number two. Health is the product of pure motives. Health is the product of pure motives. Let me read verses 7 and 8 to you. 7 and 8. I love this. I love the book of Proverbs. It's got really good... It hits you in the face. It's like the book of James at times. It says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Well, I'm, I'm happy to admit I'm crazy fool. But, um, you know, some people are so proud. Anyway, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Now, does it mean you run away and hide from God? Does it mean you're totally terrified and scared of God? No, I'm not talking about this. That's a bad fear. In fact, the Bible says that um, something about Jesus. What is it, Kerry? He gives us, he, he casts out fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. There's no fear, that unhealthy fear in with God. God gives us a, a, a spirit of peace. And takes away fear out of our mind. But this fear, this fear the Lord fear, this is a reverent fear. This is that respectful fear. It's like if you were going to go and stand in front of the Queen. Let's say the Queen. I'm not a royalist, but um, I often pick on the Queen. Uh, but if you were going to stand in front of the Queen, when you were standing in line waiting for her to come, you would have made sure that you were dressed properly and you'd brushed your hair you would you'd have learned how to bow or curtsy and, and you say the right thing and you would do that out, out of out of fear <laughs> out of out of fear not the terrifying fear not because she's a wicked witch of the west not because she'll throw you into prison you know in the tower of london and behead you it, this fear is is respect reverent reverential fear respectful fear and this is what this Bible is, is talking about tonight in this scripture when it says, fear the Lord. We're to fear the Lord. We're to respect him. We're to stand in awe of him. We're, when we come into the presence of God, you know, we need to be, be careful how we are um, reacting and acting in the presence of God. And, you know, I'm amazed sometimes in, in worship, in church life and times, what, what people will do. You know, they'll be on their mobile phone or they'll be, you know, picking their nose. I don't, you know, they just, you know, do all sorts of things. We need to have the fear of the Lord. We need to have this reverence for the very presence of God because it's so awesome, so awesome. It reminds me when Moses used to meet in the desert in the tent with, with God. God would The presence of God would come down into the meeting tent where Moses went to. And when he walked out of the tent, the glory of God was on his face. He was glowing with the glory of God and, and, and the Israelites were terrified. They put veils over him because they couldn't stand it. Well, that's the, that's the presence of God. That's the awe of God. Now, they were frightened, frightened, but you know, 
we need to sometimes perhaps be a little bit more frightened as well because we're very slack at times. We need to honour and respect the Lord God Almighty and stand in awe of his power and his presence. And, you know, I mean, if you had a real encounter with God, you'd be on the floor. Paul had an encounter with God. It knocked him off his horse and he fell to the ground as dead. I mean, you know, John, the apostle who wrote the Red Book of Revelation, he fell as dead when he saw, when he saw Jesus, you know, in the vision. I mean, that's, the, that's the fear of the Lord. And sometimes we need to get a, a new grip on uh, our respect to God. Sometimes we are very disrespectful to God. We really are. And I think we need to, to come to grips with this in our lives and learn how to be respectful. Anyway, to fear the Lord and to shun evil. Shun evil. Shun. Uh, shun's a funny old English word, isn't it? But shunning means don't do it. Put it away. Put it off. Get rid of it. Out of your sight. If it, you know, If you're looking at something you shouldn't, don't look. Simple as that. So, but health. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be healthy. The Greek word for salvation is zozo. The Greek word for salvation. And God has saved us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. So salvation in Greek is zozo. And this zozo, it means wholeness. Wholeness. When we are saved, God makes us whole. There's healing it comes into our lives and into our bodies when we become saved. In Christ, there is not only salvation for our souls, but there's wholeness for our minds, emotions and bodies. Relationships and families. See, God is in the process and in the job of producing healthy people. And if we want to have health, then we need to you know, look at these aspects of honouring God and, and shunning, e shunning evil because they are things that will help us bring health and healing into our body, into our mind, into our soul. And it's God's job because God wants us to be in health. God wants us to, to not have these uh, sicknesses of both soul, body and spirit. He wants us to be healed completely. We are made in three parts and God wants to touch every part of us, you know, and um, God is you know the trinity is in three parts and we represent that in ourselves and god wants us to be healed in every aspect of our lives and so if we honor god we will start to produce the right kind of thoughts and pure motives that are going to bring health into our body jesus makes wounded people whole he restores health he brings life to the broken spirits and he healed he heals fractured relationships living a christian life in God and trusting in God and, and loving Jesus is is going to give you a healthy life. If you're looking for health, then you need to look to God. You need to walk in God's ways. You need to you know allow Jesus to come and just restore and touch and bless every part of your life. And the level of our health may be the product of the motives of the heart. The level of our health may be the product of our hearts. What do I mean by this? Many illnesses have psychosomatic causes. That's a big word for me, isn't it? <laughs> you see, sometimes the problems, they are more spiritual, they're more emotional than physical. See, sometimes people who have bitterness in their lives will have chronic sicknesses because of bitterness. Emotional uh, damage to our, to our emotions can produce uh, physical ailments in our lives. I'm sure a lot of sickness and disease today that we have is because people have broken, wounded uh, emotions and spirits. And because of that, because they've allowed anger to come into their lives or they've allowed um, bitterness. bitterness to come into their lives or you know, a root of reje rejection to come into their lives, these things have, they are spiritual uh, strongholds within their lives, but out of the spiritual stronghold, they produce a physical reaction into the body, and they bring uh, disease and ill health and unwellness and unwholeness into a person. Now, if a person is defiled in their heart and spirit, then it's going to bring a defiling into their flesh, 
they're the result of that. Even sin, the consequences of sin, brings disease and, and death into our lives. You know, if we if we drink and drink and drink alcohol to excess, we can end up with um, liver cirrhosis, cirrhosis of the liver, and we can die. We can have alcohol poisoning. We can die. You know, sometimes the sins that we commit will actually bring physical. Uh, problems and disease and difficulty into our lives and there's a whole list and you can imagine and you know some of the things that people do that are very sinful that will inflict incredible physical disease into their life and rob them of health rob them of health but God wants us to walk in health and he wants us to walk in complete wholeness of soul uh, spirit and mind and body he wants every part of us to be healed inside outside upside downside wherever god wants a complete healing in our lives and we get this by fearing god and have a, a holy reverence of of um, god and his presence and shunning away from sin uh, walking against the re the temptation to sin putting sin to one side doing our best to avoid sin now look some of us will sin i still sin i don't want to but sometimes i do and i try to shun sin so like we're not going to ever reach perfection but but we need to to put off sin as much as possible and god willing he will give us even greater strength over sin temptation so we need to shun we need to put off we need to don't do when we find ourselves tempted in those situations okay so the i said you know the level of um internal difficulties and emotional spiritual difficulties can produce this uh, fact of um ill health into our being and so um the proverbs teach that when we get when we rid our hearts of pride and we respect god and we refuse evil then healing begins to flow joy forgiveness honesty a clear conscience all start to release health into our lives isn't that amazing so as you learn to forgive um, i'll tell you what when people have unforgiveness it binds them up but when they start to allow god to give them the, that freedom to forgive and they start to forgive with all of their hearts they forgive and they properly forgive uh, there's such a release of, of toxins in their body in their spirit in their soul when they when they just forgive others uh, that healing starts to to come into their lives and into their bodies and into their minds it's a beautiful thing you know a, a clear conscience you know imagine you know if you don't go if you go to bed troubled at night with a guilty conscience that's going to rob you of your physical strength you know you're going to start to suffer uh, from fatigue and lack of sleep and it can it can produce chronic disease in your life because you have this guilty conscience this troubled sleep but you know when we learn to walk in forgiveness and joy and honesty and we're shunning evil when we start to walk in god's ways then you know he's going to give us good sleep and, and he's going to give us good and it's going to release good health into our bodies true health comes from doing things god's way when we do things god's way we start to walk into true health we come into the freedom of true health now i also know and, and and i can't pick every kind of cover every avenue in these topics in one go because it's there's so many types of points of view but i'm not saying we'll be perfectly healthy because you know christians can still have diseases they can still have um uh deformities in their bodies they can still have some terrible things and sufferings that they have to go through so I'm not saying this will abolish every single thing, but it certainly makes us much better by getting rid of all this junk and negativity in, in us. It gives us a much healthier, freer lifestyle. And while we go through some other issues, we can continue to pray for God, for God to release those healing, uh, that healing into our body. But tell you what, when you get out of your spirit and you get your spirit and your heart and your emotions right, you're on a much better place to live life to, to the fullest. You know, you're going to, you're going to that joy will, will be so much stronger in you and sometimes even sickness uh, when you if you're so full of joy you can actually walk through some pain or walk through some difficulties because the joy and the happiness and the freedom in god will sustain you and give you that little energy even knowing that god will help you every step and god is with you can help you go through difficult times my wife 
suffers with ill health and yet she, we go on missions trips and we go on long plane trips we go on huge times on trains and, and buses and, and automobiles and, and, and it's difficult for her and yet she's walking in the way that God wants her to walk and she's honouring God and respecting God and in fear of God and serving God and out of that there, there comes a strength in her that sometimes lifts her beyond the pain and the difficulties, helps her. It doesn't take it all away, but it, it helps her continue to achieve. And, and she goes through these troubles, but she overcomes and she stands and walks forward. So health is produced by pure motives. Pure motives are had when we honour God, when we, we have reverent fear of God, when we love God and love his presence and respect God, and when we shun evil, when we, we try not to sin, when, when sin approaches, we run away. When we try to live a clean life, when we try to live a holy life dedicated to God, that's when we will see a, a greater health flowing into our bodies. Okay, number three. Prosperity is the fruit of wise investments. Prosperity, prosperity is the fruit of wise investments. Now, that in the natural, I can understand that. If you are very wise in your investments, if you... Uh, you know, if you would put your money into gold, you know, 20 years ago and invested in the gold market 20 years ago, you would have considerable amounts of uh, extra money now because of the value of gold. That would have been a wise investment to make. And I, man, maybe I could go back, go back 20 years, you know, get a few thousand dollars worth of gold and then I'll be much richer now. Wise investments will bring prosperity into our lives when we wisely invest in things. But we're not just talking about financial investments tonight. I'm not giving you advice on what to invest in. Although, you know, uh, silver is, is starting to pick up. And we should have brought silver back a few years ago too when it was cheap. The, you know, anyway, I'm not, giving you, I'm not giving you financial advice tonight. I'm talking about a different kind of prosperity. But prosperity is the fruit of wise investments. Let me look at verses 9 and 10 and read you those scriptures. So here's Proverbs 3. 9 and 10. Um, honour the Lord. Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will, be, will brim over with new wine. Vats sound more like bats to me. Sometimes this, the Bible is just written in such... It's old English kind of stuff and, and I stumble over the words. But the meaning is beautiful. The meaning is beautiful. Honour the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. You see, first fruits. What are first fruits, you say? They're first fruits. When you have an apple tree and it produces uh, the apples, well, the very first apples, that, that's the first fruit. And the, in the Bible days, the people would take those very first apples or the very first corn in, the, in their fields or the very first of whatever, and they would offer them to God as a sacrifice because they were the very first. And when they did that, when they honoured God in that way, God would then bless them and prosper them. So that was the, this kind of um, agricultural sense of this, this thing here tonight. But it, it's, it's talking not just about giving a cabbage to God or a pumpkin to God. I have a pumpkin on my vine. It's not me taking that to church on Sunday. Here's my first fruit. Really for us nowadays, first fruits are really, it's our finances. You know, um, and we need when we get our pay and when we get our, get finances, we need to give an offering to God of, of that. Make, make it the first thing you do. The first thing you give away, the first thing you spend, you know, should be reserved for God. You know, don't give him the leftover crumbs at the end of your pay packet when you're nearly broke and you've got two dollars to put in the offering. You know, give him the first and give him the best and give him fresh. You know, before you've spent all the rest. You know, give it to him and bless him with it. Because when you do, when you honour God with with tithes and offerings and generosity of giving, when you honour God first with your finances, and this is a scary thing for people because some people hold their money so tight. Somebody said that you know a person held the pound note so tight that the queen had tears in her eyes. I hope you understand that joke. But you know, and some people's you know their, their wallet is nearly sealed with a with a padlock. You know, 
But when we can release our finances and don't hold on to them tightly, and we can give generously to God and to the ministry of God and to people in need or whatever you feel God is calling you to, to do, when you give to God, God is such a wonderful person bringing blessing and prosperity into our lives that, that we do not lose out. Now, I look at my friends at work, where I work. We're on the same wages. I've worked there for many, many years in this place. And, you know, I am not poorer than them financially because of my giving to the church. And, and I've given, you know, I've given generously at times to the church and still continue to, to generously give into missions and my mission and, and people's lives. And I'm not saying that to brag in any way or to be boastful in any way. I'm just telling you that um, I have a principle of giving the first fruits of our life in money, in finances, in generosity. I believe in it. I believe in the principle of generosity. And I, and I believe in doing it first and putting priority on it. And, you know, I am no poorer than the guys in my, in my warehouse where I work. In fact, I'm, I'm richer in so many things. I'm even richer financially than they are at times. Because why? Because they smoke and they drink and, and they do these things, which costs more than what I give to God at times, although sometimes my giving is a bit bigger than that. But that's a bigger story and it's wonderful to be, to be a blessing to people in need and to leave something behind in life. You need to, when you live your life, you need to leave a deposit of your life into other people's lives and into places and things that are godly and important. Another story. So, for us, if we want to prosper, we need to be wise. And I want to tell you, God wants us to prosper. Let me put my Bible down for a second. God wants us to prosper. He promises to supply all our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. He promises that in the Bible. He promises to supply all our needs. He doesn't promise to supply all our wants. You know, I might want a, um, a $40,000, $50,000 Harley Davidson. I don't really, but say I did. God isn't going to supply my want. You might want um, one of the fastest cars in the world. You know, I don't know cars very well. But, you know, whatever they are. You might want that. Well, you know, God isn't giving, going to give you what you want. God's going to give you what you need. And sometimes our need uh, is a lot less than our want. And sometimes we want more than we really need. And, you know, the whole trip of consumerism. I'm lost for words today. Consumerism. I hate consumerism. But we are part of it. It's part of life. But we can uh, watch that and make control on that. But God promises to give us all that we need. All that we need. According to what? According to his riches. In according, according to his capacity. And he has great riches. And he has great health. And nothing is impossible for God to do. And, and he does things incredibly, incredibly. And he blesses us incredibly. And he touches and reaches out and he will fulfill our needs. When we wisely give freely of our finances and our first fruits into the kingdom of God, the promise to us is that God will bless and God will fill our barns with, with you know, with abundance and our vats overflowing. You know, there's a sense of abundance and, and overproducing. God will bless us so we can't contain the blessing. He is not a stingy God. He's a God that continues to bless and bless and bless. Why? So when he blesses us, we can be a blessing to others. Not so when he blesses us, we hold it all to ourselves and we, we, we stack up the gold bars in our bedroom and we, we fill up the cupboards with food in our kitchen and we sit back and go, wow. No, God blesses us and releases stuff into our lives and financially and physically and stuff so that we can be a blessing to others so we can give out and continue to give out generosity and more generosity and the more you have the more you can give some people the more they have the more they hold on to and the less they give and the meaner they become but as christians the more we give to god the, the more we will get the more that we get the more that we can give and the more we let go of the more things will come it's just an incredible economy that god has for us God says he can do immeasurable, immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. That's in the Bible. That's what God says. He, he will do more for us than we can ever imagine. And I'll tell you, you know, some of the stuff that God has done for me and Kerry, it's more than we ever imagined. 
you know, we have lived an incredible, wonderful, supernatural life of blessing and goodness, of difficulties and problems, of victories and sorrows. But overall, God has incredibly been good to us, over and beyond what we could dare imagine. Because that's what he is. In, uh, in Malachi, he says he will open the heavens' floodgates with provision when we tithe into God's kingdom. You know, when we, are, when we give of our first fruits, when we, we know the secret of generosity and we apply it to our lives, there is an incredible release into our lives. But it's important to define true prosperity. You see, oftentimes we think, oh, you know, prosperity, the church only talks about prosperity. Prosperity. You know, and, and you know, sometimes, yes, some of the, the churches have in Australia, in America, on the TV, they, they've taught the prosperity doctrine, uh, and where it's all about cash, it's all about money. Uh, and I want to tell you that prosperity is more than accumulating wealth. It's more than receiving finances and money. Prosperity is, and this is the most important thing, prosperity is living under the favour of God, living in God's favour. That is true prosperity. That yes, your finances will prosper, but so will your health prosper, and so will your relations prosper, and so will your friendships prosper, and your job prosper, and all the things that you touch will prosper, because you know, prosperity is such a broader thing. You are living under God's favour. Wow, I want to live in God's favour. I want to live under his hand of blessing. I want to, you know, I want to be that person. How can I be that person? By giving of the first fruits. By being a person of generosity, not even just money even, but also in generosity. What about a generous smile? What about a reaching hand? What about somebody who needs their, their garden lawn mode? You know, what, there's so many ways that we can be a blessing to other people. It, we've got to get off just money all the time. Prosperity is more than money. But I tell you what, it's incredible. When we, to honour God with our wealth and our first fruits, it is the key that releases God's favour into our not lives. Giving is not only the key to receiving, it, giving is not only the key to receiving, it is a key to receiving. If you give, you, you will receive. There's a, there's a sowing and a reaping uh, in the Bible, a concept of sowing and reaping, which is a, an incredible process and wonderful promise for us. Um, of sowing, and, and but the reaping back is so incredibly magnificent. For instance, quickly off the subject, but quickly, you know, if a, when a farmer sows, he sows single seeds into the ground, uh, like a corn, but out of that single seed comes a, a plant that produces many um, corn bits, things, cobs, you know. The, the, the harvest is greater, 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 greater than the initial sowing, far greater. And you know, that's the key. When we give, we're sowing the seed. And, and out of that giving, if we give with pure motives and an honest heart and listening to the word of God and moved by God, when we give, then we will receive a harvest. There's a harvest coming for everything that we give. We might not get it all in our lifetime. It might not come to, back to us in this physical world, but I guarantee the next world, you will receive some rewards and blessings that are the harvest of the things that have been sown in the past. Giving is not just the only key to receiving, it's the, tr it's the secret of true prosperity. If you want to truly be prosperous in life, and prosperity is living under the favour of God. Do you want to live under the favour of God? Do you want to be like, yeah, God, your hand is on me. I'm under, under your palm, you know, I'm, I'm sheltering in your, in, in, in your hand, you know, under your favour. When you, Man, it's a good place to be. It's a good place. Everything seems to fall into place. Everything seems to just truck along just good. I mean, you will go through some troubles, but man, they're not going to stop you and put you off and put you down because you're just going to keep going around. And you're under God's favour. Wow, it's a wonderful experience. We are to trust God with all of our hearts and acknowledge him in all of our ways. Honour him with all of our crops. We don't have crops, but we can honour him in what we have, financial, in service, in manual work, in, in time, in labour, in love. There's many ways. 
but there's no place you know at the top to or to have victory in our lives for half-heartedness or divided loyalties you know we have to make god the lord and serve him with all of our hearts remember before we talked about you know giving all of your heart to god we have to give total surrender we have to give him all our life all of our hearts lay our lives down to him and if we do that then we're going to discover this uh, incredible place of living under god's favor now i said i was going to do um uh, one more secret and i'm going to do it but all i'm going to do i'm not going to preach about it i'm just going to read the very words of this psalm and if you reread it and reread it and think about it and contemplate it you'll get what i'm getting to okay you'll start to understand what i would have said about this scripture i'm just going to leave you with the scripture tonight it's a bit like homework tonight mm -hmm. so i've given you the three secrets the three secrets uh, of of living this incredible powerful life in god and receiving the abundance of god into your life i've given you three secrets but i'm gonna go beyond my pre secrets because i'm going to show you generosity tonight by giving you an extra an extra piece an extra point so let me look at my bible again and we're going to go back to um proverbs chapter 3 and we're going to read verses 21 to 26 all right 21 to 26 And that I've called this point, if you're making, making notes, or you're, you're not making notes, but if you're making notes, it's point four. Judgment and discernment is the source of safety. The source of safety. So I said tonight, just quickly, success is the result of right choices. Health is the product of pure motives. Prosperity is the fruit of wise investment. And I'm throwing in a freebie. Judgment and discernment is the source of safety these are incredible things incredible secrets that we can gain and have and put into our lives that are just going to give us such a glorious way of living so let me i'm going to just read this scripture and say no more you can work it out for yourselves tonight and then I'll, i'm going to finish because i can't keep going forever 21 to 26 21 26 here we go my son and daughters and girls and boys my son preserve sound judgment and deserve discernment preserve sound judgment and discernment do not let them out of your sight they will be life for you they will be life for you an ornament to grace your neck then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble when you lie down you will not be afraid when you lie down your sleep will be sweet have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked for the lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared wow isn't that wonderful oh I could preach and preach forever that is just get it into your heart read that read, go back home and and open your bible proverbs chapter 3 verses 21 to 26 what an incredible word what an incredible word i can't i can't stop I can't stop there's so much to say but god bless you tonight thank you for watching i hope you've been blessed i hope i can put something into your heart and life so you can walk under the favor of god i want to see you walking into the favor of god living in god's favor so god bless you i'll see you again next week goodbye